Hi everyone, we are going to be talking about simplifying rationals today. Um, first, we're going to go ahead and write our steps to simplifying um, radicals here. So, that first step, you're going to remember all of your rules for factoring. So, number one, including taking the GCF, the very first thing. Look for your two terms where you have difference of cubes, um, sorry, difference of squares, difference of cubes. You're also going to look to make sure you have factor by grouping. If you have four terms, you're also going to look to see if you have trinomials, you're going to use your AC method. So your second step is then to then simplify your numerator, just your numerator, the top of the fraction. You're going to simplify by factoring using any of those methods I just named in step one. Step three, you're going to simplify your denominator by factoring again. That's the bottom of your fraction. And then we're going to divide out any common terms and simplify our fractions. So for our first example here, what we're going to take a look at is um, just our numerator. We're going to remember all of our ways of factoring. So our first thing, I'm only looking at this top of this fraction here. So um, I have a monomial, so I actually am not able to simplify any of this stuff unless I actually look at my whole fraction this time. Um, this will be factoring if we have a binomial. So we're going to look at the whole fraction first. So I'm going to work with just the numbers, 20 and 24. So I know that 4 goes into both of those, and you have to find a number that will go into both of them nicely. So 4 goes into 20. We have that 5 times. We have 4 goes into 24 six times. Okay, that's our numbers. Now, I'm going to go ahead and start simplifying my letters. So I'm going to start with the A. I have 2 on top, 3 on bottom. Um, if I were to actually divide those out, I have an A left over on the bottom. I have one more on the bottom than I had on the top. If I have B to the 4, B to the 4, those actually divide out to 1. So 1 times 5 would just be 5, or 1 times 6A would just be 6A. So I'm not going to write the 1. Then I have three, or sorry, six C's on top, three on bottom. So I have C to the third power on top. So that is actually my final answer. So I don't actually need this long division sign, but this is actually my final answer is 5C to the third power divided by 6A. Now for our next example, we're going to use negative 20x squared minus 5x divided by 5x. So I could see here that I actually do have two terms. So now I am going to be just working with this numerator. I am going to take my GCF out first, which is a negative 5 and the variable of x. I have it for both terms there. We are then going to write the remainder in our parentheses. Negative 20 divided by a negative 5 is a positive 4. x squared divided by x, I'm left with just x. And then, this is one of the big steps that a lot of you guys forget, I have a negative 5x divided by a negative 5x, which is a positive 1. Once I do that, that's my remainder. A lot of you guys don't like writing the 1, um, because I know in some cases I don't write the 1 because it's being multiplied by something else. If 1 is the only case, that's the only option, then, then you have to actually have the 1. We're going to divide that by our denominator. I can't actually simplify our denominator any further, so I'm just going to rewrite it. Now, I'm going to look at my numerator and my denominator here. I know that this is a negative 5x and a positive 5x. I can divide out both the 5 and the x. However, I am going to be left with that negative 1 in, on the top there, so 4x plus 1. The final thing you'll want to do here is just distribute that negative, so I'm left with a negative 4x minus 1. And I would actually be okay if you guys wrote it with just a negative parenthesis 4x plus 1. Um, what I mean by that is like this as well. So that's totally up to you guys. Um, but factored completely, it'd be due to, um, I would be okay with doing this way because that would be factored completely like your GCF. But accept that answer as well. <laughs> so again, working with the numerator only. For our next example, we see our x squared minus y squared divided by x plus y. So we're going to go ahead and rewrite that first. So I know what's in my numerator and what is in my denominator. Okay, this is a case where I have two terms. I'm going to be working with my numerator first. 
So in my numerator, I see that I actually have two terms. I am going to try and do the difference of squares, so I know that x times x gets me x squared, and y times y gets me y squared. So I am going to write this out as my difference of squares. And again, if you have the plus and minus switch there, you're totally fine. Okay? I cannot simplify my denominator um, because there's no GCFs. There's only two terms, but it's not a difference. I don't have a subtraction sign, so I'm stuck there. Now our next step was to divide out our common um, factors there. So x plus y is my common factor. I'm left with only x minus y as my final solution. Our next example is going to be the 2d squared minus 4d minus 70 divided by d plus 5. So again, this, in this case, the first one that I actually list is in the numerator. And then we have our denominator, which is that second value listed, which is the d plus 5. <clears throat> again, I'm only going to focus on my numerator here again. So I have 2d squared minus 4d minus 70. I see that I have a GCF of 2 first. So then I have d squared minus 2d minus 35. Okay, we are not done there. We need to now look to see if we can actually factor the thing inside the parentheses. So I'm going to use the AC method. I know that my coefficient is 1 on my x squared term or my d squared term. So I'm going to do 1 times negative 35 which is a negative 35. My new b value is a negative 2. So, or not my new, my actual b value is negative 2. I'm trying to find numbers that when I multiply will get me to negative 35. When I add will get me to negative 2. So I have negative 7 and 5. Negative 7 times 5 gets me negative 35 and negative 7 plus 5 is negative 2. Don't forget that GCF. I'm again only working with the numerator so I can write, since my coefficient on this one was a 1, I can use that shorter method of saying d minus 7 and d plus 5. If you guys do not understand that shorter method, go ahead and rewrite out your d squared with your new b values as negative 7d and then 5d um, oops, minus 35. And then you would go from there, determine your GCFs, etc. Okay, so that is my new numerator. My denominator is going to stay the same again because I actually do not have um, the, I don't have anything I can actually simplify. So my last step is to actually divide out any of my common factors there. So I see d plus 5, d plus 5. So my, so my final solution would be d times d minus 7. And again, this would be completely simplified. Um, if you wrote 2d minus 14, that's not factored completely, so I'm going to start saying that we could do our solutions just like this. And for our last example in these notes, we're going to try one more. So 6n squared minus n minus 12, all divided by 3n plus 4. Again, I'm only going to work with my numerator first. So 6n, I don't actually have a GCF, so I'm going to go straight to the AC method. So I have my 6 times negative 12, and I get my negative 72, and my new B value, or my B value is negative 1. So I'm trying to determine what values when I divide, or sorry, when I multiply by, well, I get negative 72, but when I add them, I'm going to get negative 1. That's going to be negative 9 and 8. 9 times 8 is 72. A positive times a negative is a negative 72. And my negative 9 plus 8 leaves me with my negative 1. So that actually works for my values. Here, I cannot actually do that short method, so I'm going to do um, some side work over here. So if I have 6n squared with my new b values minus 9n plus 8n, minus 12. I'm now going to determine my GCF with my first two terms here, which is 3n. Write my remainder inside my parentheses. Find my GCF of my last two terms, which is a positive 4. And I get oh, 2. 8 divided by 4 is 2. Negative 12 divided by 4 
is a negative 3. So yay, I did do my factor by grouping correctly. That means that my GCF on my, or not my GCF, my first factor is the value 2n minus 3, the one I doubled up on and made sure I did my factor by grouping correctly. And then my other factor is the value of the GCFs together. Okay, so that's my new numerator here. So I'm going to go back over here. That was my little side work to write my new numerator, which that side work is definitely needed to be showing your work, FYI. You need to be showing me your work. Okay, that is my new numerator. My denominator was not able to be simplified, so now I have 3n plus 4 and 3n plus 4, both of my numerator and my denominator, and we're left with 2n minus 3. You guys might come up with a case where you do have to factor your denominator as well. Um, will you just be doing the same thing and you would still be canceling out numerator and denominator, see if anything cancels. All right, you guys, I, we will practice this more in class. I will see you then. Have a good day.